Hello everybody. Today I'm doing a feature on LaDonna Adrian Gaines, better known as Donna Summer. She was a five-time Grammy Award winner, a songwriter, actress, and superstar. She won her last Grammy in 1998, 23 years after her first big 1975 hit. Her songs was covered by more artists than I can name in this video, and she was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and given the title Queen of Disco. I remember a lot about her early career, and she was one of my favorites, and I have a lot to say. Welcome back to the House of Nostalgia, and don't forget to like the video. Donna Summer was born in Boston, Massachusetts on December the 31st, 1948. She had six siblings. She made her big singing debut at church when a scheduled performer did not show up and 10-year-old Donna surprised everyone with her beautiful voice. She was very popular in school, participated in plays, and anything that had to do with singing. She left high school and started her journey to become a professional performer. She auditioned for the production of Hair, the American tribal love rock. It was a musical and she got the part. This musical was making its debut in Munich, Germany and Donna was not intimidated about leaving Boston, Massachusetts to perform in this musical. After the end of the production, Donna remained in Germany and continued to perfect her singing by performing in different productions and singing background for other artists. She learned the German language within a month of her movie. Donna married her first husband, Helmut Summer, and changed the O in her new last name to a U. Sally Go Round the Roses was her first release recording in 1971. She had her first European hit in 1974 called The Hostage from the album Lady of the Night. In 1975, Summer recorded Love to Love You Baby. This song was a big hit. It was different and it was central. It was the beat for me because the song didn't have that many words. I really don't remember hearing this song on the radio, but it was popular in our home upstairs. Definitely not downstairs. And it was just a popular song. People knew it but I just didn't hear it on the radio. And the song fit right into this up and coming genre of music called disco. The song was over 16 minutes long and I really don't remember any other hit from that album. Now a rumor started going around that it was a man in the recording booth with Summer helping her with the moaning sounds from the song. And she actually had to come out during an interview and put that rumor to rest. Her 1975 album, A Love Trilogy, had the disco hit, Try Me, I Know We Can Make It. She recorded the album, Seasons of Love, in 1976. And Spring Affair was a big hit. The whole album was real good. And by this time, Donna had become a star. Now, I might be reaching with this, but I noticed years later, not at that time, but a few years later, that Diana Ross started sounding a little like Donna Summer. You can hear it. Diana's love hangover and spring affair and love to love you baby had similar singing styles. Everybody wanted a piece of that disco genre. Donna and Helmut divorced in 1976. She continued making hits with 1977's Remember Yesterday, which was an old to the 40s era, and Once Upon a Time. The cover photo for Once Upon a Time 
was a very beautiful photo of Donna Summer. I always liked her without the signature bangs, but those two albums wasn't as big a hit as the ones before. It was okay because her career was still hot. In that same year, Summer did an interview with Ebony Magazine, upsetting quite a few people by the way she described her husband at the time and the description of her young child. Now, even though it wasn't no social media back then, magazines would post interviews and people would send in their comments and magazines would print them the following month. Basically the same as what we do now with social media, but now you can reply within seconds. She received backlash for her statements, but not on the scale that it would have been today. In 1978, Summer recorded the Live and More album, which set records for her. This is the album that featured the classic MacArthur Park, Someone Left the Cake Out in the Rain. That song was written by Jimmy Webb. In 1979, she starred in the movie, Thank God It's Friday, and won a Grammy for the song Last Dance on the soundtrack. Summer recorded her big album, Bad Girls. This album had the title track Bad Girls and Hot Stuff, and both of them went to number one. So with MacArthur Park going number one, that gave her three number one hits in the same year, and she was the first to do it. That was a hot album, and she did a lot of writing on that album. Her greatest hits album, On the Radio, released a duet with Barbara Streisand called No More Tears. And in 1980, the writing was on the wall. Disco was on its way out. So Summer released The Wanderer in 1980. And this album had a R&B and pop sound, but it was more pop to me. And after disco, pop would have been a good fit for her. The Donna Summer album was released in 1982, and in my opinion, I feel like this album was the direction that she wanted to go in. That's why she named it after her, I believe. She had songs written and arranged by Quincy Jones and Rod Templeton. David Foster contributed to the album, and she had background singers like James Ingram, Howard Hewitt, and Philip Ingram. She wrote a few songs on this album, and this was a good album. It wasn't as successful as her other albums, but I feel like it was a success to her because she was trying to break the mold, so to speak, and she had a lot to prove. In 1983, she had the biggest song of her career. She works hard for the money. A lot of people feel like this was a disco song, but to me, it wasn't. It had that 80s sound that was coming in after disco. They played that song and video a little too much. Summer won a Grammy in 1984 for her inspirational song, Forgive Me, for the Cats Without Claws album. In the mid-80s, disco was gone. House music and rap was in, and so was Madonna. And they all started taking over the airwaves. In 1987, Summer released the album Another Place and Time. She had been closed in this disco era box, and it would take 10 years for her to come out from under that. In 1991, Donna Summer sued New York Magazine because of an article that was written about her making anti-homosexual remarks concerning the spread of AIDS in the homosexual community. According to Alice Crane from UPI website wrote, and I quote, Summer allegedly refused to include a song written for the homosexual community on her recent album, Mistaken Identity. 
The unidentified source said the song was intended as an apology for statements allegedly once made by Summer that homosexuals were sinners and that AIDS was a divine ruling. Summer denied all of this and sued the magazine and it was settled out of court. She was not interviewed for that 1991 article. It was written based off of an unidentified source. There was no evidence to back up that claim. Summer released two albums in the early 90s, Mistaken Identity and a Christmas Song album in 1994. She made the best comeback by receiving a Grammy in 1998 for the song Carry On, which was a special moment. Giorgio Moroder and Belloc was Summer's longtime producer and songwriter since her first big hit, Love to Love You Baby. They ended their working relationship around 1981, but she teamed up with Giorgio Moroder and won the Grammy in 98. Her career was on the upswing. Donna Summer passed away at her home in Florida on May the 17th, 2012. Her death did not go unnoticed to the public. Anybody that was around during that era most definitely remember Donna Summer. She is the queen of one of the most nostalgic genres in music history. You could not speak on that genre of music and not mention her. Thank you so much for watching this video and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.